Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use variables to change the color of a 3D model on a website. So here's a working example of what we're going to be pulling off. We have this 3D model of a smartwatch right here inside spline. And then down here, you're going to be able to click these buttons and change the color of this model in real time. So I'm going to be using the Elementor page builder to make these buttons. But the good thing is that you could use any sort of website to build this out. So you're not limited to just Elementor. So I'm going to jump into Spline and show you how we set everything up and then the code that you're going to need to pull off these buttons. So let's just jump right into it. And here we are inside of Spline. And this model right here is just one of the uh, templates that you can just download right here if you click on library. And you can just type in something like watch. So that's I just pulled that in for an example. And like I said, we are going to be using the variables built into Spline. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can read a lot more in detail about how variables work. But what we're going to be just focusing on is the numbers variable. So let me jump into Spline and show you what all this means. So by default, you have no variables. When you first have your scene set up, you're not going to have any variables. But in this example, I already have a few set up and I already have them attached to this watch. And in order to get to variables, what you're going to want to do is just click anywhere like here in the black or out here, not on a model. So on the right side, you're going to see this tab right here called variables. Now what you're going to do is click these four little dots. And like I said, you're not going to have anything inside of yours. I already have my five colors set up right here. So if you're starting from scratch, you're going to just click uh, the plus button and then the number. So let me go ahead and just delete that one. And let me show you what this means. So what we need to do is give each variable a name and then a value. So in this case, I'm just going to call it cream, white, black, blue, and red. And these are just going to be the colors of the example that I showed in the beginning. And you can set these to either zero or hundred, but in this case, let's just set them all to hundred. So basically what that means is on and off. That's the way I look at it. So 100 means like 100%. Zero means like 0%. That's how I'm looking at how this is going to be set up. Now what we need to do is go ahead and attach these variables to a material. So let me show you how that works. And inside of this model, they have it separate out by the different uh, layers right here. So I'm just going to click on the very first, first one called strap. And the way they have it is the strap is all attached to one kind of like global material called main. So now I'm inside of the main material and as you can see right here, I have my five colors already right here. And this value right here of 100, that's what these variables are going to be able to control. So think of variables as a way that you can globally change values of a number inside of spline. So in this case right here, this is like the opacity. So if you kind of see what we're doing here is we're going to have five colors and by using variables, we can globally change that number to like a zero when a user clicks on a button on a website. So let me show you how this needs to be set up. What you need to do is have your five colors uh, right in here. So you can just see they're just the regular color swatches. And then it's a little bit uh, difficult to see, but I'm going to point an arrow to it. You see this plus button right here? That's how you're going to assign a variable to that color. So if I click that, that's the cream. Next is the white one. So if I click this, go to white. Now I just need to go down the list and change them all to the variables that correspond with that color. So blue and red. And that's it. So once you have that, now what we're going to do is you're just going to need to export this. And in this situation, it needs to be code export and then just hit update. That's pretty much all you need to do right now inside of Spline. Now what we need to do is, of course, you need to grab this code and let's jump into the website and show you how you set everything up and link it to this watch. And here we are on the back end of that website. And like I said, I'm going to be using the Elementor page builder, but you can use whatever builder you have or you can even just use custom code. So in this situation, what I'm having is just an HTML widget. And then down here, I just have a container with these five buttons. So let me go ahead and walk you through this code and how you link it to these buttons. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can just download all of this code and just kind of drop it in and change your values out. So let me just walk through this code. 
The very first one you're going to need to have, this is the canvas. This is how it's getting rendered inside the browser. And then this chunk of code right here is going to be what you copied from your spline. So this code right here might look a little bit different. What I'm doing is using uh, the runtime.js on the spline servers rather than having it local. So you can always uh, host this file local if you want to have it a little bit better performance. But in this situation, I just wanted to use the spline runtime. So that might look a little bit different. This should all look the same. And then of course, this is gonna be un unique to your scene. And then right down here is of course, where all of the, uh, ma basically where the magic is happening. So what we need to do is assign a custom ID to each one of these buttons. So as you can see, I kept it very simple. I'm calling everything button one, button two, button three, button four, and five. So anywhere right here where it says button one, you're gonna to need to change this. So you can see when I highlight that, it's in three different locations. So what you need to do is correspond uh, this JavaScript and what it's doing is you can see right here, it's adding a listener event for click. Basically what that's saying is the JavaScript is always listening to see if anything with this ID is gonna be clicked. So as you can see right here, I'm clicking on one of my buttons all you need to do is assign an ID, a unique ID to each one of your buttons. So I kept it very simple for this tutorial. All of my buttons are just called button two, and then the black one's gonna be button three, and you get the idea, button four and five down here. So you just need to make sure that these buttons will correspond with this code right here. And then this line right here is gonna be really important. So as you can see, it basically looks the same between all of these buttons. The only thing different is you can see right here, uh, cream says 100, the rest of them say zeros. Then the next one, the button two, you can see right here is white 100, everything else is a zero. Button three is the black one, you can see it says 100, everything's a zero. You kind of get the idea. So what this line of code is gonna do is tell Spline, okay, let's use those variables that we just created inside of Spline. So let me go back into Spline show you that when you click on variables, these are the IDs right here that that code's using. So you have to make sure that you know exactly what these are called and they have to match up exactly. So just you know, put them in a clipboard or whatever and just copy and paste them right here. So what I do is I create one of them first. So in this case, I just created this one and then you just copy it down here you know, four different times and I just change the values. So basically what it's happening is when the user clicks on the cream, the cream is gonna set that material to 100 and all the rest of them to a zero. So that's the power of variables. You're gonna be able to control things inside your 3D model all from HTML code. So this is like really powerful stuff and you, you can see that. So this is a great case where having like an e-commerce website would be great for this. So instead of having multiple images, you're gonna give the user the ability to actually rotate and see how the colors change you know, in real time. And you can see how fast it is. It's, there's like no delay or anything like that. So that, this is like really, really cool stuff that you can definitely use on websites. And then that's it. So once you do that, you're just gonna you know, go ahead and hit update. And what I always like to do is just click through all of them, make sure everything works. And as you can see, everything is lining up right here and everything changes in real time. And that's it for this video on how to use the variables inside of Spline and linking it to your website. Make sure that you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.